most of the things the great men of old that we read of did if you study the scripture you discover they didn't have the ability for it when they started but they have known the way of faith and so as they kept doing it they became masters and when you become a master you will start talking from the faith realm ordinary men will look at you and say are you okay did you read about jesus in john chapter 11 lazarus was dead they sent for jesus that your friend is sick go and heal him he didn't go when lazarus died he now said lazarus is asleep uh -uh. thomas say i'm a man of fact if he's asleep he will wake up jesus had to come down to the arena and say okay he's dead if you master faith eh, you'll be talking about a project of 100 million those who are around will think you have 990 <laughs> They think you have 90 million in your account. That's why you are talking like this. When they have the opportunity of checking your account, they will now discover you have 150,000. And you are talking about 100 million. What do you mean? Are you okay? You are not in that realm. You have moved. Consistently in scripture, Jesus called the dead sleep. When he came to Jairus' house to raise the girl from the dead, he said she's asleep. The people started laughing at him. But he was talking from the faith realm. When you find people who are too fact-oriented, if you ask them, they'll say, no, me, I'm based on fact. I'm not, they, they call those who operate by faith religious. They say, all these religious people, I don't, I'm not, they don't know the world. It will take training to get there. But when you become mature, you begin to operate by faith. Second Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. Paul said, our light affliction are but for a moment. He said, but they work for us an exceeding weight of glory. He said, why we look not at the things which are seen? Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are unseen? He said, for the things that are seen, they are temporal. But the things that are unseen, they are eternal. So these are the two things that makes for faith operation. Number one, your focus is not fact. If your focus is fact, you will fall every man walking by faith is focused on what god is saying what god is saying may not be feasible but that's where he's looking at and eventually he will get there the second operational modality for this operation is that you know and you have convinced yourself that this mountain is temporary if you are not able to look at the unseen and if you are not able to convince yourself that what you are going through looks as if it will kill you but it's temporary you can never walk by faith you want to walk by faith these two things will become cardinal ingredients of your life i know now you don't have any money but god is telling you you are going to run a company all you are seeing is about companies you're on youtube for four hours they say what are you doing you are studying about the best companies in the world you are drawing policies you are drawing structures you are drawing strategy and they are asking you which year will you start that's not the problem i'm studying what i am you don't know it you don't have it yet but that's where your eyes are a man who doesn't have faith is waiting for the day they will dash him one million when you ask him what is the problem he say i don't have capital you will never have capital because the first capital you have is not money the first capital you have is faith and so when you find that man he's looking at the unseen he's drawn into the unseen he's overwhelmed by the unseen he lives in the unseen and then this temporal thing that is trying to defile him he keeps telling himself this night there must be daybreak this night will not remain like this he falls down he stands up again he says, maybe this is twilight i may just be lying down at the wrong time daybreak can just be one second later and so he keeps standing he keeps standing he keeps standing nothing can defile him you find such a man that's a mature believer and that's why you find men of faith never compromising because they know everything they are going through is temporal. The only thing that is eternal is what God told them. That's why you find men of faith, they start certain things at the most unbelievable time. Some men start at 50. And they told you life ends at 40. If you are a fool at 40, you are a fool forever. Not in the corridor of faith. Smith Wigglesworth began at 45. He shook the world. Some start at the age of 15. And then you say, no, no, you are a teenager. You can't. It's not age-oriented. It's faith-based. So age cannot determine what you do. Some people might even come and look at you and say, hello, boy. They want to remind you that you are a kid. 
you will tell them there are two kinds of age there is a chronological age in time and there's a divine age in light somebody you call a boy might be your grandfather in the spirit because he's walking by technology you don't know it's called faith so Paul told Timothy say let no man despise thy youth don't let anybody if your character is intact you are good to go so a mature believer functions by faith never quit quitting is a sign of immaturity stand your ground that thing you are going through somebody went through it and changed it and if one person changed it it means you no longer have the right to quit you can only quit if nobody has done it before but if somebody has done it then you have no right to quit and the bible already gave us an answer it said there's nothing new under the sun it said there's no temptation that is peculiar to you that thing you are going through somebody went through it and he turned it to a testimony and you too will not turn your back until it becomes a testimony it's called the faith life the faith life sees every challenge as temporal and the faith life sees only what god says as the true reality get there and you're a mature believer